So good morning. Uh, this lecture uh, continues the study of the linear quadratic uh, problem. Remember uh, what were the last conclusion of the previous lecture. You have assumed that you have a linear uh, plant, x dot equal to ax plus bu. And uh, we have a cost that is defined over an infinite horizon uh, span of time, which is this quadratic cost, x transposed qx plus u transposed ru. In general, this can be, can be a multivariable. And the solution was a state feedback. So your u, your optimal u is minus again k times the state. So it's a state feedback. And uh, this state is computed uh, using this formula. So the inverse of r times b transpose times p, where p is a matrix that is uh, the linear, the positive definite solution of the algebraic Riccati equation. So the algebraic Riccati equation is this one in this last line. As you can see, it's a quadratic equation because you have P times some matrix times P. So you have in some uh, squares of the elements of P. And uh, so this is a quadratic equation, has more than one solution. But if the pair AB is stabilizable, then uh, what happens is that uh, there is a um, positive definite solution that you can uh, obtain by solving this equation. I told you that, uh, and I gave an example, use the method of unknown uh, multipliers to solve problems up to, say, order three, and even for order three is a lot of computations. In practice, you solve this equation using numerical methods and there is um, a MATLAB function in the control system toolbox, toolbox which is the LQR function that solves the algebraic Riccati equation and even computes the, the gain k, the factor of gain k. Now what I would like to do now is to particularize, particularize uh, this theory for uh, the in, uh, single input, single output, so scalar case, scalar plan, with just one input, one input and one output. And to replace here, instead of x transposed qx, we want to replace this by the square of the output. So how can we do it? Let's see it. So let me advance a little bit the slides. So in this case, you can, uh, you can observe that you can write the square of y. Well, y is a scalar. It's assumed that to be a scalar. Uh, but you write it as y transpose times y. So you can write 4, the number 4, as 2 transposed times 2, because 2 transpose is 2. It's a little bit silly, but here this reasoning is useful because you know that y is related to the state by y equal to cx. So you replace y transposed y by uh, x transposed c transposed times y, which is cx. Okay. Remember that when you compute the transpose, you have to uh, reverse the order of the multiplication of the matrices. So this is exactly the problem that we had before. Now. R is a scalar, I call it raw. And uh, Q is now C transposed C. And uh, in this case, we have a number of interesting properties. So you can immediately write the solution as a particular case of what we have deduced before uh, for this value of Q. So the matrix uh, Riccati equation the algebraic Riccati equation becomes this one that you see here, with Q uh, replaced by C transposed C, and K is as, as before.
Now, we have this very nice theorem that says that if the pair AB is stabilizable, remember AB is stabilizable if uh, you can find a uh, vector of gain such that A minus BF has all the eigenvalues with negative real part. That is to say, uh, AB, if AB is controllable, uh, of course, you can find an F like that. So all controllable systems are stabilizable. But there are systems that are not controllable, provided that the part of the state that is not controllable uh, is stable, is asymptotically stable. So naturally goes to zero. So uh, this is a little bit more general than asking controllability. And so if the AB is stabilizable, and AC is observable, then there is a positive definite solution of the algebraic Riccati equation, and the closed loop system is asymptotically stable. Now, we are, um, we are uh, coming to a controller which is nothing more than uh, state feedback. A constant state feedback. And uh, we can ask the question where are the poles of this, uh, where are the poles of this uh, closed loop system when you do this state feedback associated to the k computed by the solution of the linear quadratic problem? And the solution is uh, quite elegant. And you can compute it compute the uh, poles of the closed loop system in a very simple way. And the result that bears the name of Chang and Letov, it's the Chang Letov theorem. I think that Chang and Letov ne never met each other. They uh, obtained this result independently one from the other. Chang, Chang was working in China and Letov was uh, uh, working in the USSR. And uh, the result is this. Suppose that you have a system uh, and you compute the transfer function of the open loop system. So uh, you have a B of S and the A of S, which are related uh, to the matrices A, B, and C in this way. Okay, so uh, your transfer function is B of S divided by A S. Okay, this is nothing more than the formulas that we deduced for the transfer function in terms of the state uh, model parameters. Now, you built this polynomial delta S. You see, it's A of S, A of minus S, plus one divided by rho, B of S, B of minus S. And uh, suppose that you have N poles, so the degree of polynomial A of S is N. Since you have A of S times A of minus S, you have a polynomial of degree, which is the double, because you are multiplying one polynomial of degree N by another polynomial of degree N, you get a polynomial of degree N plus N. So you have uh, two N poles. Now, these two N poles, these two N poles have a particular pattern. Suppose that S1 is one root of delta S. Okay, so this means that if you replace S by S1, uh, delta S1 is zero, okay, by assumption. S1 is a, a root of delta S. Now, suppose that you now consider make e S equal to minus S1. So uh, observe that now you have delta of minus S1, S1 is A of minus S1, A S1 plus, etc. But this is the same as we had before for S1. You just swap the products of A of my, A minus S1 in A of S1, and you get the same thing there because the multiplication of polynomials is commutative, and also here for the B. So for S equal to minus S1, delta of minus S1 is also zero. This means the conclusion is that if you have a root, you always have 
the symmetric root with respect to the imaginary axis. So if S1 is a root, then minus S1 is also a root. So you have this, um, you, you have this pattern of poles that are mirrored with respect, asymmetric, with respect to the imaginary axis. So you can always select N poles and roots of delta in the left-hand plan. And uh, it happens that these stable roots are the roots corresponding, the closed loop roots that correspond to applying the LQ feedback state, state feedback gains. Okay? So if you, let's go back to, if you compute K by using these expressions and you use a control law which is U equals to minus Kx and you replace it in your open loop system so that you have x dot equal to a minus bkx, so that's the model for the closed loop system, a minus bkx. Where are the eigenvalues of a minus bk? With this choice of k, you know that, okay, let's go back, you know that uh, the eigenvalues of the closed loop system are the, the n stable roots of this polynomial delta, delta S. And you can always find n stable roots because n roots are stable and then roots are unstable. Actually, you will never have poles over the imaginary axis. So uh, poles either, either have, or the eigenvalues either have a negative real part or a positive real part. So you can take this advantage of, of this uh, for doing several things. One thing is uh, you, you can solve the LQ problem using a pole placement. So instead of computing the Riccati equation, you can do one thing, which is compute the delta S. Once you know the uh, polynomials A of S and B of S, which are define the, the transfer function, the open loop transfer function. Then you write this polynomial, you compute the poles of this polynomial, and you take the n roots of this polynomial that are on the left half plane. And now you do a design of pole placement control by state feedback, such that the desired poles are these optimal roots and you come exactly to the same solution for the gains as you would come if you were using the um, if you were using the, the recut equation okay so this is an alternative way let's see one example suppose that uh, uh, you have this second order system which with this quadratic cost so q is one and uh, uh, sorry, Q is not one, Q is uh, C transposed C. So we have C here. So uh, rho, we take the value 10. Okay, that's something that we decided to have. Now, right, using, uh, using uh, uh, either the, trans the Laplace transform or block algebra as I did here, compute the transfer function. In the transfer function, open loop transfer function is one plus s divided by s squared minus four. And in this case, b of s is minus one plus s, and a of s is s squared minus four. Okay? So write the delta. The delta, remember, is a of s, a minus s plus one divided by rho, b of s, b of minus s. With a of s equal to s squared minus 4 in this example, b of s equal to minus 1 plus s. So your delta s becomes this polynomial. Now, uh, this is a, a, a quartic polynomial. So if you equate it to 0, 
uh, you probably don't know how to solve it, but it's simple because you can observe that uh, 1 plus s, 1 minus s is nothing more than 1 minus s squared. So you only have powers of s squared. So you do a change of variable, call it z equal to s squared, and you end up with a second order algebraic equation that you know how to solve. And if you solve it, you get z1 equal to 4.6 and z2 equal to 3.5. Now, the possible values of s are the square roots of these two numbers. So each one gives you two possibilities, one positive and one negative. So you end up with these four roots. And as you can see, uh, they are symmetric because you have 2.14 and minus 2.14, 1.87 and minus 1.87. So if you look, at the, the optimal roots, the optimal roots, you have two on the left and two on the right. And these two on the left at minus 2.14 and minus 1.87 are the optimal ones. So your desired characteristic polynomial is a polynomial that has roots in this desired optimal pose. And it's this one. Okay, if you if you simplify a little bit you the the polynomial will get this expression so uh, now it's just a question of designing k1 and k2 that feed back the state components and such that uh, the closed loop system has poles at the desired positions and, uh, i will jump that the details and uh, you can compute the desired polynomial in terms of k1 and k2 is this. So you, you equate it with the desired characteristic polynomial coming from the Changlet of result, and you get k1 and k2. Okay, so this is another possibility of um, solving this problem. And uh, you, if you want later, you can do. Uh, a trial, an exercise, which is compute this problem, but by writing the Riccati equation and computing the gains from that. So that is to say, that is to say, solve this equation, compute k, and you will get the same solution as we did here. Another use, perhaps more important, of the Shangwe top uh, result is the so called root square locus or symmetric root locus. And uh, uh, you know that uh, the poles, the optimal poles, as well as the non optimal poles, satisfy this expression that you can rewrite in this way. For those of you that remember root locus, what we have here, we have a parameter, and this parameter is one over rho. In root locus, is a k times a transfer function, which is now is b of s, b of minus s divided by a of s, a of minus s, and this must be minus one. So, root locus provides a number of uh, rules that allow you to do an approximate pole, uh, plot of the uh, location of the values of s that satisfy this condition. In other words, that satisfy this uh, the Shanglet of uh, condition. And what you can do, you can plot this root locus and then take just the negative real part. Remember that this is not the same. It's important that you realize that this is not the same of doing the root locus with respect to b of s and a of s. Now, you have to compute this larger enlarged transfer function and then do, do the root locus with respect to it to get the results correct. And then, in the end, you take the negative real part. Now, uh, before seeing uh, one example of a root locus, 
let's see what some extreme cases. For instance, if rho is very large, very big, okay? So this term is neg neglectable. And you have a of s and a of minus s equal to zero. So for uh, a very large weight on the on the manipulated variable, remember that rho multiplies u squared, uh, the equation becomes approximately a of s, a of minus s. Now, if a has all the roots on the left, then the optimal poles are just a, that is to say, if the system is open loop stable, then when you uh, have a very large weight on the manipulated variable, on the control variable, the optimal solution is to do nothing. Stay the poles, leave the poles where you have them, and uh, of course your controller gains will be zero. Now, suppose that A of S has one uh, pole in the right, with a positive, in the right half plane, so in the positive, um, with positive uh, real part. In that case, then you would replace that by its symmetric to get n stable poles. Okay? So uh, the LQ, LQ solution, it's clever in the sense that if uh, you have an, an open loop stable system, it will leave it as it is. <coughs> if the weight on the control is very high and but it will stabilize it it will stabilize it uh, if there are uh, open loop and stable poles now suppose that rho is very small that's the other extreme case if rho is very small then you can multiply everything by rho and this first term is neglectable and then you have b of s b of minus s now, what happens is that uh, some poles will go to infinity, but some other poles will cancel. Uh, if P of S has all the roots on the left, the poles will cancel those zeros. If some zero, if there is some zero with a positive real part, then instead of canceling, canceling it, you place a pole symmetric with respect to it, but on the left side, that's the opposite. Again, we have the ability of tackling uh, non-minimum phase plans. Okay? Uh, this is not uh, true for all uh, controllers. There are controllers that do not work with uh, non-minimum uh, uh, non phase plans. They have pro problems, but the LQ with infinite horizon is able to uh, cancel all the zeros. It cancels the zeros if the zeros are on the left half plane, but it places poles symmetric to those zeros if the zeros are on the right plane. Okay, these this two slides are uh, what I just said. Now, uh, let me give you one example uh, with this plan. So you have this state model. From this state model, you compute the transfer function between u and y. And remember that we have uh, observed that s squared minus 0.5 is s plus 0.5 times s minus 0.5. So you have poles at minus 0.5 and 0.5 and a zero at minus one. So you mark the zero at minus one, then you have a reflected zero at one, and then you have one pole here, one pole here, and then you reflect it, with, which gives two poles here and two poles here. And you do the root locus for the wall systems when one overall changes. And then you take the real part. So this part on the left is actually the place of the poles for different values of rho. So you get different poles when you change the rho uh, for the optimal system. It's just this part. This part 
on the right is just used for computational purposes. There are still two things that I would like to uh, mention before the end of the course. One is relative stability properties of the LQ controller. So uh, let's define the open loop state transition matrix by SCI, SCI minus A inverted. So I is the identity matrix. This is the standard definition of state transition matrix. And uh, suppose that you multiply your uh, x by a vector of gains k and you re-inject it with a minus sign. Uh, you know that for stability purposes, the product of all the gains in this loop, so the so-called loop gain uh, is quite important. So in particular, in particular, uh, if you look, it, look at it uh, in the complex plane, if you look at the L of S in the complex plane, then uh, depending on the plane being open loop stable or unstable, you will, uh, uh, you, the, the stability depends on encircling or not encircling the minus one point. Now, uh, there is one property that I will not prove. Uh, you can look at it in my book. It's one page of computation, so I will not do it here. It's not difficult, but it's a lot of algebra. Uh, of algebra, you can show that the modulus of one plus L of j omega is bigger or equal to one. This is a simplified call, um, form of the so-called Kalman inequality. Now, what does it says? Uh, you can write the Kalman inequality in this way. So uh, the modulus of one plus L is the same as the modulus of L plus one, because you can multiply by minus one the, what is inside the modulus. Modulus of, of the product is the product of the modulus. So it will be, it would be the modulus of minus one times this modulus, and the modulus of minus one is one. And uh, furthermore, you can write minus one as mi uh, plus one as minus minus one. Now, what does it says? It says that this is the distance between L at frequency omega and the point minus one. So if you have your complex plane and you have here the curve for the loop gain L, at a given frequency, you have one point of this curve, and this distance to point minus one is bigger or equal to one. So, if you consider a circle of radius one centered at minus one, this point is outside that circle. Okay, uh, and this means this in common inequality that is equivalent to this expression, this inequality, it tells you that you will never enter the circle of radi radius when centered at minus one when you have a loop gain that comes from the linear quadratic uh, the solution of the linear quadratic problem now uh, this means this means that uh, for the phase, uh, gain margin if you have a stable if you have a stable open loop stable system, then the phase margin is infinity because you will have something that comes from, you, you will never have the need to encircle point minus one, okay? The analysis should be a little bit thinner to understand this, but uh, you might understand that you probably have something that uh, goes according to my, the, to the cursor and goes there. And no matter, no matter you change, your your gain you will never enter minus one. Now, uh, if you have an open loop unstable plant, that's the worst case. 
uh, you can reduce your gain as much as two before encircling the point minus one. So you have a, uh, a gain margin of the inverse of two, which is 0.5, at least. And it can be between 0.5 or for open loop and stable plants, it's infinity. So you can increase indefinitely your gain before it gets unstable. Now for the phase margin, for the phase margin, uh, if you look at this geometrical construct, since you never enter past this point, you'll be always further away. This is a phase margin. This is a phase margin here. It's this circle. Okay, and this phase margin will be bigger than this angle, which is 60 degrees. Okay, so you have a phase margin for the alkyl, which is at least 60 degrees. So if you feed back the state, then you will have this very nice uh, stability margins of uh, at least 0.5 for open loop stable systems or infinity for open loop stable. And in any case, uh, of 60 degrees for the phase margin. Now, the situation is that you are not always allowed to feedback the state. You have to estimate the state. So you have to input, uh, you have to integrate uh, an observer, a, st a state observer. Now, suppose that you have uh, noise and you have, can have two types of noise. You have, can have stochastic disturbances that affect your derivative. It's a kind of an input that you don't control and you assume that it's a random signal. And you can also have sensor noise that appears on the output equation, this V that affects the, the measurement of Y. So assume that both W and V are white Gaussian noises. That is to say, they are sequence, sequences such that their autocorrelation is a Dirac impulse. Or if you think in the terms of the power uh, spectral density, they are uh, si uh, signals with a constant power spectral density. That's why they are called white noise sequences. Okay. Now, suppose that you want to have uh, a state estimator that satisfies these two properties. The first is that the uh, expected value of the error between the true state and the estimated state x hat is zero. And the other is that the energy of the error, of the error measured by the, well, this is the power, the difference between x and x hat is the estimation error. Then you take the norm and you square it. And this is the power of the error. And now you integrate the power for all time between zero and infinity, you get the total energy. Remember that uh, the error is assumed to go to zero for, for this to be fulfilled out. Otherwise, you would get infinity here. So uh, if you want to have a state estimator with these properties, what would you get? Well, looking at property number one, you can show that uh, provided that you use the structure of the state feedback uh, of the state observer that we have studied before, it will be fulfilled. And remember, this was a replica of the system state model uh, with an extra term that is a reinjection of the output error. Now, to fulfill the second property, you must design the gain of the observer uh, in a careful way. So this means that you are not imposing the poles of the error dynamics where you want in a somewhat arbitrary way, but you are going to design directly K, and this imposes, of course, the poles, such that this second property is uh, Happen. That is to say, the energy of the error is minimum. So the solution 
is given by the so-called common Bucy EQM filter. So the structure of the common filter is the structure of the observer. So uh, you have a replica AX set plus BU of the original dynamics. And then you have the error of the output, yt minus cx hat. cx hat is what you expect yt to be. So this should be small. Then multiplied by a gain, an observer gain LO. And uh, that adds, it's re-injected on the observer. Now, uh, the main difference comes from the way that you design, by which you design LEO. LEO is given in this expression where this matrix sigma satisfies uh, a Riccati equation. Although this Riccati equation is a little bit different. Actually, uh, you, you can, uh, uh, if you replace B by B trans by C transpose and uh, A by A transpose, you will get, uh, you will get this uh, uh, Riccati equation from the other one. Okay, but there is an independent proof. Okay, so you start by solving this Riccati equation. Again, in MATLAB, you can use it uh, LQE function, LQE. In Portuguese, LQE, the function LQE. And you solve sigma, and then you compute the vector of gains in this way. Now, you have one problem. You have one problem uh, when you have this structure here which is uh, you need, you see, you see this KO and RO that are the, sorry, the covariance matrices of W and V. And you have to compute them. Now, uh, you might think, okay, uh, we do some, study of the noise and we identify the noise to compute this to estimate these covariance matrices. This is very difficult to do, very expensive and impractical. So what people started to do was to use this as tuning knobs. And the problem is that depending on these values of Q naught and R naught, the beautiful stability margins of the LQ controller can be destroyed. So the fact that you have this uh, process noise and observation noise is terrible, destroys the guarantees of on stability margins. So uh, someone said, okay, let's use this Q0 and R0 instead of uh, making them correspond to uh, covariances of some true uh, noise, which is somewhat elusive. Let's use this as tuning knobs. So this is something that you should adjust. Okay, this is Kalman. And uh, this is the so-called LQG regulator equations. So you have, you estimate the filter with, uh, you estimate the state with the Kalman UC filter. And uh, then you have similar equations for the controller, which are just the LQ equations for compute the gain. But now instead of feeding back X, you feed back the estimate of X. That's the linear quadratic Gaussian uh, regulator equations. Uh, it differs from the LQ because in the LQ you are feeding back the state and not the estimate. And the Gaussian comes from the assumption that you have Gaussian noise. That's the situation in which this is optimal. And you have uh, also a separation principle that allow you to solve these two problems, the control design problem and the estimator design problem separately, and then putting everything together. But this is something that I will challenge. OK, so uh, coming back to the situations, how do you select your R0 and Q0, okay? Someone said, let's select R0 and Q0 such that we recover the nice stability margins of LQ control, okay? And 
That's why this uh, procedure has the name L2G LTR from loop transfer recovery. You are recovering, adjusting the noise gain, such as to recover the uh, loop gain of the linear quadratic uh, case that tells the yields the nice stability, relative stability margins. Now, for for uh, minimum phase plans, you can make just R0 equal to 1 and select Q0 according to this expression where this small Q uh, is such that you make uh, select with a big value. So when Q, small Q goes to infinity, the loop gain of the LQG approaches, converges to the loop gain of the LQ controller. So let me show you one example. Uh, and this, the example is a double integrator. Okay, so you can motivate it with uh, 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 equilibrating a, a ball on a bar or by many other ways, a mobile robo robot, for instance. And uh, the state model of the double integrator is here. You have a transfer function, which is one divided by a squared. So I leave to you the care of uh, computing the details. Of course, it must be one divided by a square because you have a double integrator. And uh, now you start by designing an LQ controller, designing these two gains, K1 and K2, optimizing this cost of an infinite horizon cost. And uh, you solve the Riccati equation. For the control, you get the solution, the positive definite solution, and then you compute the gain using this positive definite solution, and you get the gains, the feedback, state feedback gains. Now, you can also design design the um, you can also design uh, the observer using the common gain filter, the common gain filter. Okay, this is the response that you get with just with just the LQ. Now, with the if you compute the LQ uh, loop gain for the LQ linear quadratic problem, you see that the loop gain never enters, never enters. It's it's the definition is here. Okay, with the k, the gain k corresponding to the uh, LQ gains, and it never enters the circle of radius one centered at minus one. Now, suppose that you now have noises, input noises, the process noises, and uh, sensor noises, V. Okay? Which corresponds to this uh, to this model. Let's assume that uh, Q zero and R zero are one. So you have uh, your your uh, controller is now has now this uh, structure. So you have here a replica. You have here a replica of the double integrator. These two integrators. Okay, these are x one hat and x one hat. Sorry, there is. A, it is a typo here. There should be heads because these are estimates. And you re-inject re the output error with gains L1 and L2. This L1 and L2 you design using the Riccati equation for the, the filter, the common filter. And then you feed back your estimates with K1 and K2 that you have previously designed. So uh, this is the equation for the common filter to compute L1 and L2, and you compute L1 from here. Okay. So uh, if you compute the gains, you can see illustrating this case, you can compute the closed loop uh, poles that are the original LQ poles, and now you have the filter poles. Okay. This illustrates 
the separation between design and the control and the filter. And uh, if you uh, assume now that you give different values for that parameter Q using the story of the loop transfer recovery, the solid line, the seeker line on the LQ, so this is the gain and this is the phase, as you in the thinner lines are the ones that correspond to using a um, common DC filter. So, okay, so as you can see, when you increase this parameter, you are approximating the loop gain of the LQG to the loop gain of the LQ, both in gain and in uh, phase. And okay, this is uh, all that uh, is part of uh, this course. Um, although many other things could be said, but uh, the course ends here.